Your Excellency. Well, thank you. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi, namaste to all of you, distinguished ministers and uh, participants in this important conference. Let me say that Prime Minister Modi is uh, a great friend of Israel, a great personal friend, and I believe a very great leader of India because you have changed India's uh, standing in the world. You have uh, made so many reforms and so many changes, including in this question of renewable energy. You've recognized that India has both, both scale and skills, uh, and the combination of the two is formidable. Uh, you have forged new alliances. I will never forget uh, the opportunity when you visited Israel. The two of us waited in the, on the beach, in the water, and uh, we spoke about desalinization, which uh, is important for both of us. We, I will never forget my unforgettable visit to India when we visited uh, the high-tech uh, center that you were building, in which Israeli companies were represented, or the agricultural farms which are helping uh, 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 Indian farmers uh, in ways that uh, perhaps many, uh, a few years ago, just a few years ago, would have been unimaginable. So I thank you for inviting me to participate in this uh, important summit. I think this is one of the fortunate uh, changes, not many, that COVID has brought. It allows us to meet more or to see each other uh, more frequently than uh, we otherwise could. And that could be, as Mark Rutas said, uh, a mark of the future. Now, we've all received, uh, amidst the pandemic, some good news uh, on the battle against corona. The new vaccines are promising. Uh, I think the end of this terrible pandemic is in sight. Uh, but we don't just want uh, a world free of COVID. Uh, we want a future with less carbon and less pollution, a future based on green energy. And that's why I welcome this vital initiative by Prime Minister Modi. And I want to assure you that Israel is your partner in this quest. Now, there are three obvious sources of renewable energy, alternative energy. One is wind power, the other is water power, and the third is solar power. There may be more. There are experiments that are being done today with all sorts of alternative and truly unimaginable sources of enormous energy uh, that defy our normal thinking, but that, is, waits, that awaits the future, or perhaps uh, it could come a lot faster than we think. Yet today we know that we in Israel have one clear source of alternative energy, and that is sun. We have a lot of sun. Uh, and so along with our natural gas finds in the sea, uh, solar energy has allowed us to cut our dependence on coal dramatically. In fact, uh, we lead the world in cutting back on coal consumption. It will reach zero by 2025. We won't have to use it except in emergency situations, which I hope do not, uh, uh, do not uh, happen. Uh, but today, uh, solar energy provides some 10 percent of our uh, energy com consumption. Just a few years ago, it was 2 percent, so it quintupled in a very few years. By 2030, that should reach, uh, uh, should pass 25 percent. And then by then, at midday, during the summer, solar power will produce 100 percent of our energy requirements. The crucial challenge in solar energy, as you all well know, is storage. How do you conserve solar power when the sun is not shining? And again, I think the answer will be found, perhaps in the, this area as well, in physics and in human ingenuity. Uh, there are people working on this problem and other related energy problems. We have uh, about 400 startup companies just in this area alone. They're creating an entirely new industry. It's amazing what ingenuity does. For example, uh, we have a car industry today. It's not called that, but it produces ways, you know, the guidance system, the crowdsourcing guidance system, or it produces mobile eye for, uh, for driverless cars. So we now have a car industry with some 500 uh, cars. But in solar, the 400 startups uh, have now received, uh, or in the energy sector, have now received uh, billions, billions of dollars in investment. And I'm very hopeful that they're going to produce solutions 
that will be benefit, uh, I'm sure, will benefit all of uh, humanity. Uh, we have recently uh, forged peace agreements with the UAE and with Bahrain, and our co cooperation with them includes all these areas, and specifically solar energy. Uh, so I, I think it's not merely the citizens of Israel and uh, the Gulf states that will benefit everybody in the Middle East, Arabs and Jews alike, and well beyond that, uh, will benefit from this. We will provide, I believe, a shining example uh, of the benefits of peace to all the countries of the region and of the world. And the last thing that I would like to say is this. Uh, Prime Minister Modi and I have spoken about this uh, many times. I believe the future belongs to those who innovate. Uh, and the power of innovation enables us to tap new sources of wealth, new sources of energy, uh, the ability to change health, the environment, water, uh, the food we eat, uh, the security as we travel, and so on. Uh, this is a fundamental challenge to ideas that only a few decades ago were still prevalent. Uh, a few hundred years ago, Malthus predicted that we would well, that population growth would outstrip uh, the, the power of agriculture to provide food, and we see that he was wrong. Not because the population didn't grow, but because human ingenuity allowed food production to grow infinitely more than uh, population growth grew. Uh, the same thing uh, continued to inform the, uh, the Club of Rome with the famous limits to growth. We were not going to be able to grow because, again, our ability to provide uh, the necessary products and services and resources would be drained by our exhaustion of natural resources. This is not to say that we have to not treat the environment. This is to say the opposite, that we can treat the environment, should treat the environment, should stop pollution, so should go on to alternative sources by the use of the one resource that we have. It's what's stored in our brains and our minds with the determination to innovate. So I believe that the most important renewable energy is ingenuity and innovation. And all the countries represented here, beginning with India and Israel and all of you, are committed to seizing innovation in order to seize the future. And on that, I think we can all be very, very hopeful.